Hello, this is Shavam Ghosh from Stratasys, and this is number two in the series of things you might not know your J70 could do. Today, cross-platform color matching. And because I've tasted one of their products every single day since I was 12, let's try and print Pepsi Blue. What you'll need is some exact color you're trying to match, a secret file and a secret URL from Stratasys with links to both in the description of this video, some color manipulation software, in this case we're going to use Photoshop, and a 3D color printer. In this case we're going to use a Stratasys J750. So let's talk about defining the color I want to print. I googled what color is Pepsi Blue and I found a website called schemecolor.com which showed me. This is the color blue I want. What is that color exactly? This website says it's 1B52A2. And to understand what that means, we have to make a little diversion into how color is defined. There's two main ways colors are defined, RGB and CMYK. RGB stands for red, green, blue, and it's mainly the amount of electricity you're giving to different diodes, red diodes, green diodes, and blue diodes, how much power you're giving them to determine how bright they are, so they can make colors on electronic devices. RGB is mainly for electronic devices. On the other hand, CMYK stands for cyan, magenta, yellow, and for some reason, the K from black, and it specifically is related to inks. Typically, these are inks that are used to apply for printing, 2D paper printing, physical objects. Why do we care about RGB versus CMYK? Well, let's talk about every color the human eye can see. A bunch of scientists got together and defined the lab gamut. Gamut just means range of colors. And this is every color it's possible for the human eye to see. Now if you compare that to the RGB gamut, which looks like this, it's a subset of the lab gamut. That means RGB screens can't make every color that's possible in nature. In fact, things like this color purple should not be possible on computer monitors. If I was doing this accurately, the display right now should probably look like this because those colors outside the shape can't be shown on a computer screen. But that's a lot of work and these are just representations anyway, so I'm going to go back to this for now. So let's compare the RGB gamut to the CMYK gamut. So electronic screens versus what can be printed. And you can see they're not exactly the same. If I put them on top of each other, it looks like this. Which means there are some colors you can see on a screen but not print, and there are some colors which you can print but not see on a computer screen. So how does this relate to our Pepsi Blue? Well, 3D printing is pretty close to CMYK paper printing. If you look at the J750 gamut, it looks like this. A little bit bigger than paper printing, but same general shape. So just to recap, this outer thumbnail shape is all colors visible to the human eye. Outside of this big shape is things like ultraviolet and infrared, things we can't see. A subset of the lab gamut is RGB, everything that can be shown on a computer screen. And a subset of that is CMYK, meaning everything that can be physically printed using four or more inks. So the problem happens when you've got colors in one gamut that are outside the other, and translating in between them. So let's look back at that Pepsi Blue. 1B52A2, what does that mean? Well, it's actually a hex code for an RGB color. And in this case, the first two letters of the hex code stand for how much red you're going to have, the next two letters how much green, the final two letters how much blue, but it's essentially an RGB color. There are other ways to define colors, like Pantones, which is a different gamut, and that's a whole nother ball of wax that I'm not going to get into right now. Let's try and translate this RGB color into something that can actually be physically printed. So I'm going to jump over to Photoshop now and make a new document, doesn't matter what size it is. And what we're going to do is put a square on there that's the color that we want to see. So let me grab this pick color picker tool and I'll type in 1B52A2 and let's make a color of that square. Okay, so this is what our Pepsi Blue looks like on a computer screen. Now let's see what it looks like on a printer on J750. So I'm going to make a copy of this document and open them up side by side. So now I've got my two colors side by side, but they're still both defined in the RGB gamut. 
and if you look at the very top of each screen, you'll see they're both defined in the RGB gamut. This is where our first secret file comes into play. It's a .icc file that contains the J750 gamut. So if you download it from the link in this description, and you double click on this file, it'll upload to your computer. And the way you check to see is if you go into Windows Color Management, you'll see a Stratasys J750 Vivid choice there. This means this color profile can be used by programs like Photoshop or even SolidWorks or other programs to show you the color gamut. So we're going to go to Proof Setup at the top, Custom, and change one of our sides to the Stratasys J750. Okay, let's grab this one, View, Proof Setup, and we'll change it to Custom, doop, J750. Okay, and you can see already the colors are slightly different. So on the left hand side is what the original color 1B52A2 looks like on an RGB screen. On the right hand side is how it would print out on a physical 3D thing. So our job now is to change the color on the right hand side until it matches the one on the left. So I won't bore you with the details. We're going to go through it a couple different times and just the same process of so just you know, subtly making changes until the color looks like the same from side to side. And what we end up with is this, so when the colors are pretty well matched. Here they are side by side. And so while in the original, we'd be using 1B52A2, to A2, translated into the J750 gamut, we really want to send the printer the color 174A94. That will make the J750 color coming off the physical printer equal to what we see on this RGB computer screen. Now there's one last thing we have to check before we leave Photoshop, and that's if our color can even be printed on our J750. There's a little tool in the view menu called Gamut Warning. And what this does is it takes any part of our color that can't be printed on our gamut and makes it gray. It's pretty obvious for the two blue squares that we're okay, but what if we had something we're printing like this? Can a printer even capture all these colors? So opening up that crazy image in Photoshop, we're gonna do the same thing. We'll set the proof setup to be a J750 gamut, and then we'll go to gamut warning, and anything that's outside the printer's gamut will turn gray. Okay, so you can see a lot of the space here is turning gray. Now this doesn't mean in the final print it'll actually come off the printer gray, it just means the printer has to approximate those colors since they're out of the gamut and it's gonna do the best we can. So this step that we just did, comparing the colors and checking to see if it's in our gamut, is called soft proofing. This comparing of the color in the RGB gamut versus J70 gamut, this checking the gamut warning to see what might be out of the gamut and in gray, are all called soft proofing because they're done in software. Unsurprisingly, the next step here is hard proofing. And to do that, you'll need to print out some physical swatches of colors. Luckily, the secret link of the day included in the description of this video makes it very easy to do that. So if you click on the secret link of the day in the video, you'll get a 3D swatch generator that we made at Stratasys. At the very top, I can type in hex or RGB or lab or CMYK colors, and I'm gonna do that now. So the color we started with was 1B52A2, and if I hit create, what this does is create a swatch where it's varying the saturation by plus or minus one, varying the brightness by plus or minus one, and the hue, which is the actual color, by plus or minus 20, giving me all these choices and all these hex codes. Let's take the hue down a couple notches here. Okay, this makes it a little simpler to see. You can mess with the different sliders as you want. So I'm gonna leave it right here, and when I hit download 3D swatch, it's gonna make a VRML for me to upload. So here's that VRML it made for me, and opening that up, on GrabCAD print, I can see it stretches almost exactly the length of the width of a J750. So this is a simple swatch you can print out and see in the real world 
what your color looks like compared to a computer screen. And the best part is it only takes 28 minutes to print in high mix mode. So in under a half an hour, you can get this swatch printed out. Having a physical swatch print out is key to hard proofing because color changes based on lighting conditions, based on surface finish, even based on the person looking at it. So now with this physical swatch print out, you can take it to your customer and with their own eyes, they can say, is it better here or is it better here? And they can see under their own lighting conditions what the colors might look like coming off the printer so they can match it perfectly. Just to recap hard proofing, you're going to that secret website Stratasys gave you in the link to this video. You're going to enter your target color in the top left and hit create on the right. And then what you'll get is a download swatch button where you can make a VRML to print on your own printer. We've done a lot of steps in this video, so let's recap them here so you can do the same on your own. The place you start is by defining the actual color the customer wants with an RGB, CMYK, Pantone, or hex code. You can't just say, I want it to be green. So we started with a very specific hex code. The next thing you do is using that secret file that we're going to give you, translate that color into your printer's gamut. Is this color inside your gamut? So a check like with those butterflies we did. If the colors are way too far out of your gamut, you might want to explain to the customer that RGB and CMYK are different. You know, you can have a color in one that you can't see in the other. And maybe go back to the beginning and redefine the actual color you want to print. If your soft proving succeeds, if the colors are pretty much inside your gamut, now you can adjust them in Photoshop until your RGB output matches your J750 output. So that's what we did with those two swatches. Then use the secret link of the day to print that swatch for your own printer. Finally, you have to check here, does the customer agree that this physical swatch you printed matches their original object? If it's yes, then your hard proofing has succeeded and you can proceed to the final print using that color. If it's no, you have to do some iteration in Photoshop and with the swatches to try and get the exact right mix for the color the customer wants. You know what's inside your gamut, so all that's left is just iterating in Photoshop until you can find that right color. So enjoy ah, your color matching. Good. All right.